This is St. Patrick's Cathedral, a place that has been at the heart of Dublin's liberties and at the centre of Ireland's religious and civic life for 800 years. Earlier this year, senior church leaders from across the Church of Ireland gathered here in the cathedral to consider who should lead the cathedral into the next stages of its journey. They elected the very Reverend Dr. William Morton, the Dean of Derry. So let's meet Dean William over in his house and learn some more about his plans for the future. So William, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. I was born in 1956 and grew up on a small farm. Ended up training as a journalist in Armagh with a, a small weekly newspaper there called the Ulster Gazette. The, the work as a journalist in Armagh actually brought me in touch with a lot more churches and church events and activities. And in that way, I was then encouraged to join the Fellowship of Vocation in Armagh Diocese. My, my wife, Rosemary, and I were married uh, outside Armagh in uh, 1988. And we actually met, interestingly, uh, through the church because both she and I had been fortunate enough to each um, be awarded an organ scholarship. And I and my wife, Rosemary, and our family, uh, those who are able to come to Dublin and be here, look forward to it very much indeed. St. Patrick's is a very busy tourist site, as well as being a house of prayer. It has two identities that can often sit quite uncomfortably together. How do you think these two purposes sit together? Any occasion which brings people inside a church is to be greatly welcomed. And it may well be that people who are there at Evensong Perhaps they're not even English speaking. They may not even understand what is being said or what is being sung. But I think that there is an element to the worship of the fact that the worship, is, that it is, it is caught rather than taught. And it is possible to be caught up in the process of worship and in what is being sung and the atmosphere and the ambience and the numinous of the experience, that uh, they benefit greatly from it. And this is what draws people in. How could they fail but be drawn in by the standard of worship and the mighty organ and the sound, the wonderful sound of the choir? I think it's a thrilling and a magnetizing experience. Uh, who is St. Patrick's Cathedral for? Who does it exist to serve? The cathedral has stood here for well over 800 years. And it exists, of course, to the glory of God and the worship that is offered therein, which is to the highest degree possible. But as we do all of that there, the church also then must reach out and must do things for others. So it's a, it's a, a situation really of finding ourselves empowered by the life and worship of the church to go out, as the Collect says at the end of the Eucharist, and live and work to God's praise and glory. What are your plans for your tenure as Dean of St. Patrick's? One is to do my best to fulfill the role of Dean in serving God and in serving the people who are the church in this wonderful historic place. I would like also to do my best to promote the cathedral and to work at all that is aimed for over these coming years. And thirdly, to um, continue to promote the cathedral in terms of all cultural events. Because sometimes in terms of bringing people to the church, it's exactly through music and through singing or through lectures or some kind of artistic or cultural activity that people are drawn in to the church. And finally, what are you most looking forward to? I am looking forward to being installed in the cathedral and thereafter to doing my best to serve here as Dean. And what are you most apprehensive about? Well, we have an 11 month old golden Labrador dog called Duke and we are threatening to bring him to Dublin, but I'm not too sure that he wouldn't dig a hole in the middle of this beautiful 
manicured lawn at the back of the deanery. 